two baccalaureate campuses and seven community colleges, as well as uh, smaller education centers uh, throughout the islands. We are primarily a commuter campus. We have no majority ethnic racial group. So when we speak about underrepresented minorities, we are pretty much talking about the Native Hawaiians and the Filipinos. And um, uh, because of our special obligation to the Native Hawaiians, the University of Hawaii uh, main campus, uh, Manoa, uh, is actually located on ceded Hawaiian property. So we do have a, a special obligation uh, to them. So every campus is Native Hawaiian serving. So this is our annual uh, growth rate of our degrees awarded. Uh, we have set goals, you know, the additional 10,000 degrees by 2015, and each campus has a share, and we, we have uh, every year uh, we, mark, we have uh, specific goals. And uh, this is our overview, and we actually have met and ex actually exceeded our number of degrees and certificates awarded. What we found quite interesting um, is that, um, in this, you can see that here in this blue bar that um, our big goal, our Hawaii P20 goal is 55% of Hawaii's working age adults with a two or four year degree by um, 2025. And we've been running 42, 43%. So although we have been meeting our goals in terms of increasing the number of degrees and certificates awarded, uh, we have not made a dent here. And certainly, as I've heard this morning, uh, a portion of this is our in and out migration. Uh, we do know that we lose more people with uh, associate and baccalaureate degrees, and we know that those who come into Hawaii uh, tend to have less than the associate degree. Um, so our prediction is that by 2025, to get up to our um, um, to get up to our 55% goal, we're going to have uh, our whole state. Uh, we're going to have to come up with almost 60,000 more degrees than our what our planned trajectory was. So our efforts, we started with looking at the data. Uh, like you, we have um, uh, we actually have, we don't have system scorecards. We only made campus scorecards, uh, but we've identified a number of measures here that um, that tell us. What are the important things here? Um, as you would imagine, graduation numbers, uh, degrees and certificates awarded, but we also have retention. We have other uh, other important indicators, um, such as we know that first-time, full-time freshmen who come in with at least six credits, they uh, they have a higher rate of graduation. Freshmen who complete 30 credits in their first year. Fresh, uh, students who complete their college level English and math within their first academic year, and freshmen who declared a major by the start at least of their second year. We know all these groups have higher graduation rates, so therefore, uh, we put all of these indicators on our scorecard. So this is uh, one example of UH Manoa is our, flag, is our flagship campus, and what we can see here is the distribution of credits for the fall 07 cohort. So in fall of seven, what, 39% took between, completed between 24 and 30 credits, and 35% completed more than 30 credits. And then if we look at their graduation on time in four years, um, those who took, who had completed 30 more credits, as you would expect it, had a higher graduation rate, um, are actually on time graduation at our flagship campus is only 18%. They have really been working hard in that. It's up to 20% now. Um, so we looked at our, our data on the credit, how many credits they took. And I think the thing that really surprised us was at all of our campus, even the community colleges, more than 50% of first-time freshmen took 12 to 14 credits. We had really at our community college, I was, I, we were really surprised. And we also looked at the percentage of freshmen completing 30 credits or more in their freshman year. The four-year campuses, they range from 14 and 14 percent to 37, and our two-year campuses ranged, uh, averaged about 7 percent. So this is our four-year campuses. This is our baseline data, three fall semesters, fall 09 to fall 11. As you would expect, um, 
60% took between 12 and 14 credits, 36% took more than 15 credits, and only 2% took less than 12. I guess I don't think we were too surprised at this. And at our community college, this is again what surprised us, between 12 and 14 credits, almost 55% of them took that, uh, took that many credits, 7% took more than 15, weren't too, weren't too surprised at that, and then they had a much higher percentage of them taking less than 12, 38%. So um, we looked at the data on our, our first time freshman group, looked at them with those who took more than 15 credits and those who took less than 15 credits, and we looked at these, academic, uh, these variables, academic preparation, some demographics, demographics, and their academic success. Um, for those who took more than 15 credits, they had higher levels of academic preparation according to you know, SAT, ACT scores, high school GPA, early admit prior summer credit, and for our community colleges, we do compass, uh, compass scores. So, so this, I don't think, is anything that you, that, I mean, this would be what you would expect it. We also found that those who took 15 or more credits tended to be a little younger. Um, uh, there were fewer of them that were underrepresented minorities or Pell recipients. A uh, higher share of them had financial need met, and uh, other results were kind of mixed. And then if we broke it down by campuses, we had different, different results. So those who took uh, 15 or more credits in the first year, these are our outcome measures, had higher end of semester grade point average, had higher credit completion rates, persisted, persisted to the following spring or fall at higher rates. So again, we would expect that. We would think, well, you know, they took 15 credits because they're better academically prepared, they want to come to school. Etc. So actually, we wanted to test this assumption. So we came up with an academic preparation score using whatever data we had, and we used several pre preparation variables to, come to, uh, to a single measure that we could use to compare it to certain outcome measures. So for the four-year campuses, we use the data we had, right? They all required SAT. Uh, in our state, SAT is the more prevalent uh, uh, score. ACT, if SAT it was not available, we use high school grade point average and then high school uh, rank ratio. <clears throat> and for the two-year campuses, we use compass test scores because they don't require high school grade uh, uh, transcripts necessarily. So um, what we found with um, with students who had higher levels of academic preparation, right, they had higher scores in these variables, uh, did better than those with lower levels of academic preparation, and except, if, except for those with the lowest level of academic preparation, students who took 15 more credits had greater academic success, regardless of the academic preparation, except at the very lowest level. So, this is our baseline data again. Yellow bars are 15 or more credits. Um, four point, four point oh is the highest academic preparation score and 1.0 is the lowest. And this one is uh, average GPA in the initial semester. Okay, GPA over in this axis. So, so we were very, very pleased to see this yellow bars were higher than the blue bars. Those who took 15 credits at different levels of academic preparation did a little better. That's the four-year campus data. Our two-year campus data is a little more dramatic. But again, those who took 15 or more credits at varying levels of academic preparation did better on average. Uh, oh, we must, have skipped, we must have skipped a few slides here. Can you go back two slides? Mm -hmm. Go back two? Yeah. So that's the four 
four year campus on average GPA in the initial semester. Do you want me to click it? So this is the community college average GPA. So their results are a little more dramatic. Those who took 15 credits are a little better. And then the next slide, this is the outcome measure percent credit completion greater than 80%. This is the four-year campuses. Again, um, different levels of academic preparation, but those who took 15 or more credits did better. For the community college, even more dramatic a difference. Uh, persistence in next fall, not a whole lot of difference, but the other bars are still a little bit higher. And, and our community college, again, shows a little more uh, greater difference. The those to 15 credits. And the 15 credits does include the remediation or developmental courses that it was deeper. So we had to, our campaign was, I do <laughs> so here's our, this is our, our two minute video that we use for our new student orientation. Our objectives for our campaign was we actually want to change the norm. The full time is 15 credits, not 12. Um, I think when we thought about this, we said 